Alright, and welcome back. This is the second part of our strategy and combinations lecture. Uh, we just went over the development of the pieces. We said that we should generally go uh, pawns first, followed by knights, then bishops, and we want to leave our queens and rooks to be developed last. And the most important thing is that we want to control the center of the board. Uh, one more little note of advice is that in the opening of the game, you should generally only move pieces one time. You want to develop your pieces as quickly as possible. And that's because it's like playing basketball. Uh, when you're playing basketball, you don't try to, to try to run down the court with just one man every time. You want to try to get out all your players and put them in the best spots, and then you go attack the board. That's the way you play basketball. That's the way you play chess. And there's a lot of other game rules that are like that. So, we're going to get on to our next part of our lecture, and that's part of a pawn strategy. The first kind of pawn weakness we want to avoid is called an isolated pawn. And that's a pawn that's not able to be protected by other pawns around it. Notice that on the white side, uh, all of these pawns can, like if I move here, he's going to be protected by his, his little friend sitting next to him. Uh, but this pawn right here is an isolated pawn. Um, there's no pawn next to him, so the only pieces that can protect him are the rook and the king, um, whereas all of black's pawns uh, can be protected by each other. Uh, so actually black is winning a little bit here. It's most likely going to be a draw because there's the same amount of material, but black has the better position. So we generally want to avoid uh, these kind of weaknesses in our position. So if you're white, you're probably not happy right now. If you're black, you are happy. Uh, and that's just a general thing. Uh, and when you don't have these weaknesses, say if you're on the black side right now, your goal is to take advantage of white's, uh, white's weaknesses. So, we want to attack that pawn on a2. We want to get our rook down there. We want to try to get our king down there. And then that's our plan to try to win the game. So, this pawn is an isolated pawn. Our next kind of pawn weakness is called a doubled pawn. And it's kind of like the isolated pawns because it means that on one side, or maybe it's not going to be able to be protected at all by uh, pawns. So let's say uh, white's first move, he makes a bad move. Uh, he doesn't develop a pawn towards the center. Uh, let's say white makes a good move. Now, or black makes a good move because he's controlling the center now. And let's just say white continues to make bad moves and he puts his knight on the side of the board where he has no control. And now, black can take. And the reason black wants to take, uh, he's getting three points for three points, so he's not losing material. And the point is that if white wants to continue, he has to take back. And now notice that these pawns can't protect each other. The only thing that can protect them is pieces. Um, and that's the point. Uh, this pawn can't be protected because there's nobody here. And it just happens that they be, they're on the side of the board, so they can't even be protected on the other side. So they are extremely weak pawns. Um, there are situations where, say, if we have doubled pawns on the d-file, it's called the D file or the E file or maybe even the C or F files where it's not so bad but especially on the side of the board doubled pawns are going to be weak they're bad because they can be attacked uh, and any kind of targets in your position are things you want to avoid so that's our second kind doubled pawns our third idea in pawn strategy is something called a pawn island and we talked briefly about it with an isolated pawn. An isolated pawn is its own pawn island uh, because it can't be protected. A pawn island is a chain of pawns that, pr that protect each other. So this pawn here and this pawn here they are together one pawn island. Then you notice there's a space in between them so these two pawns are a separate pawn island. And then finally, there's these pawns on the, or over on the side, so that white has three pawn islands. One, two, three. They are groups of pawns uh, that can be connected. And black, we notice, has just one continuous pawn island. Pawn islands are, for the most part, bad to have. You want to have as few pawn islands as possible. So in this position, black is winning because he has fewer pawn islands. And why you want to have fewer pawn islands goes back to weak pawns. Um, by having pawns that can protect each other, they are stronger. They are one unit, whereas white has three smaller... Like, if you're in a battle, pretend a war battle, and you have 
15 groups of, of two guys apiece. And then let's say one of them runs into the other side, and the other side just happens to have 100 men all packed together. If you're a smaller force running into one continuous large force, you're not going to have much hope. So by grouping everything together, they can protect each other, and they are one. And chess is about coordination of the pieces and, and teamwork. So by having the pieces together with one pawn island, you're having more continuous progress, let's just say. So this, these are pawn islands. So white has one. Our black has one, white has three, uh, and generally we want to avoid the other kind of weaknesses we talked about, which are isolated pawns and doubled pawns. And when you have these weaknesses, you want to try to fix them somehow, if possible. And if your opponent has them, you want to find some way to attack them. And any kind of weakness in chess, that's what you, you really want to do. If you have a weakness, you want to try to get rid of it. Uh, if your opponent has a weakness, you want to try to take advantage of it. And chess is about advantage and, and teamwork and so many ideas. But we're not going to be able to go over all of them right now. So. so, now we've gone over controlling the center, developing your pieces, and now we're going to talk about one of the most important things in chess, and that is tactics. A famous grandmaster once said that chess is 99% tactics. And a tactic, you might be wondering what it is, and it's a move or a combination that secures some kind of advantage for the person that uses it. And it usually comes uh, some kind of material advantage. And these come in all kinds of forms, and I'm just going to show you one idea. In this position on the board, it's white to move. And you might be wondering, well, why doesn't white take the pawn on e5? It's not guarded. Well, it's because of tactics. Black has a move here that can, uh, that can secure him an advantage. And that move is queen a5 check. And at this time, he checks. And uh, white can stop the check all he wants to. But then black was also attacking the knight. So by taking that pawn, black is going to, to win that knight. Um, and there are little things you have to look for. You might call them traps if you don't know what they are, but they're not always traps. Um, a lot of times your position will have uh, a lot of things to it where you can pull off tactics. And you want to try to be as tactical as you, as you can by, by doing little tactic puzzles. You can search on the internet for them or buy books with tactic puzzles and that's one of the best ways to improve your chess game um, is by improving your tactics. So, uh, there's all sorts of forms of them. You always have to be out on, uh, on the lookout for them. Sometimes just white um, putting your pieces where they can't be captured immediately isn't enough. Sometimes you have to be watching out for tactics. And finally for this lecture, it doesn't really have to do with strategy or combinations, but it's another important way to improve your game, and that's by notating it. And what I mean by notating is writing down your moves so that you can go over it later or put it into a computer. And how we notate is like this. Imagine that along the bottom side of the board are letters. We start on the white side with A all the way through H. So B, C, D, E, F, G, H, obviously. And on the white side, on the bottom, is 1. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we call those, well, I'm not sure what you call them. We call them A through H and, and 1 through 8. But if you know those numbers, a lot of boards will have them. If you can know those, you can write down your moves easily. It's as simple as writing down where your piece starts and where it ends. There are several ways of notating. You can look them up later. But the simplest way to start out is to write the square where it starts. So say on the beginning move, white goes E2, because it starts on E2, and then dash E4. And it's as simple as that. And say black answers E7 dash E5. And then when you progress to later, uh, you can change your way of notating. But when you first start out, this is probably the easiest way. So, on that note, I hope you enjoyed our strategy lecture on how to get to the 500 rating mark. And I hope you'll join us for our next series, which is Continuing Strategies and Combinations and How to Get Past 600. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.